one of the things that I've done in my career is to try to find these patients that do unexpectedly well or unexpectedly poorly and study them in the lab, get their permission to study their tumor in the lab and see if we can figure out what what makes that patient different from the next patient. And that's, that's what led to finding the EGFR mutations. The drugs that target EGFR were developed long before anybody knew about EGFR mutations. And it was just the observation in the clinic that some people did unusually well led people like my lab and others to sequence these and find these mutations. It all gets back to the basic premise that if you don't do the right things in the beginning, if you don't advocate for your cancer, if you don't seek out expert opinions that can help you down that path, you're often uh, likely to receive therapies that have not been tailored for what you specifically have. I think we are making significant strides in treating this disease because people didn't used to live long enough to try three, four, five, six types of therapy. But many of our therapies, I think, are at least slowing the progress of the disease and allowing people to live long enough and be healthy enough to try additional therapies uh, going down the road. Uh, right now, we, you know, we treat most of those patients all very similarly. Um, but with some of the targeted agents that we have, we can start to say, well, you know, um, this drug is going to be more effective in patients with gene A in their tumor. Uh, this other drug will be better in patients with gene B. Now, what can happen, though, in patients with metastatic disease is that even if uh, we have a targeted therapy that shrinks your tumor in, you know, in 7 out of 10 patients, for example, um, they will sometimes start to grow back uh, and, can, and, and can recur. Now, right now, it's not standard that we would um, re-biopsy patients every time their tumor uh, progresses or, or um, starts to grow again. Um, but some places, at least at academic centers, are starting to do that. The reason that's important is because then we can try to figure out why those cells are growing again and then figure out what the next uh, treatment would be. The significance of most of these mutations are for patients who have metastatic disease, meaning the disease that's spread outside of the lung. Um, the reason that is is most of the targeted therapies that we have are for use in patients with metastatic disease. Um, for people who have earlier stage disease, you know, obviously surgery is potentially a curative option. And so surgery would be recommended. Um, you could actually get your tumor genotyped at that time, uh, at least, for example, for EGFR and ALK, um, because if the disease were to come back, you wouldn't have to wait for that testing to be done then to make a decision. We built a website called uh, uh, www.mycancergenome.org where we try to provide um, freely uh, information about different mutations in, cancer, in lung cancer as well as other cancers. And then what that uh, gene is in a very in a simple manner, what that uh, gene is doing in lung cancer, for example, um, what are the drugs that are associated with sensitivity or less sensitivity to that specific uh, mutation in that gene, and then what are the potential clinical trials that are available. Um, so I think as more resources like that become available, it will be easier for patients to figure out um, exactly what kind of testing should be done.